Welcome back, I'm Laura Lepping, and in this video, we are gonna go over how to glaze your windows. So the first step that you wanna do is work on cleaning your glass. We wanna make sure that we have good adhesion between the glazing putty and the glass. And if our components are dirty, then it can affect how these pieces of glass will fit back into their spot in the window. We do have a couple of pieces of glass that have been pre-prepared. And the first thing that we need to do is treat the rabbit. And the rabbit is this little L-shaped ledge that the glass will sit into. And what I mean by that is that we wanna treat it with something to make sure that it's not really dry. If we have very dry wood, then it could cause our glazing putty to dry prematurely and crack, and it may not last as long. The product that I'm going to use today is a product called Flood Penetrol. And so I'm going in with just a little um, disposable chip brush, and I'm just going to kind of do a light application around the edge. You're looking for the product to be soaking into the wood. And so the wood will sometimes look a little bit darker in color as it starts to become a little bit more hydrated. So now that we've let the penetrol sit for a few minutes here, we're just gonna kind of dab away any of that extra penetrol that wasn't able to soak into the wood. And then our glazing rabbit should be ready to glaze. There are other types of glazing putty. Today, because of its more rapid paintability, we are using a type called glaze all. With linseed oil-based putties like Sarco glaze, you can rehydrate them by adding a little bit of linseed oil. If it's too sticky, you can add something called whiting powder, which is basically calcium carbonate. You can find it at ceramic shops or even some paint shops. So the first thing we're gonna do is bed the glass. We want to make sure underneath on this rabbit that the glass will be sitting on glazing putty. You can't really overfill this ledge because when you press it down, the extra glazing putty will end up kind of pushing out either on the front side or the back side. And we can remove that and reuse that glazing. Once you've put glazing all around this rabbit edge, we'll then move on to bedding the glass. And so I'm gonna take my well-marked piece of glass here and I'm gonna drop it in. So it's just sitting on top. What you wanna see along the edge is that on the rabbit edge, it's fully filled with that glazing putty. But once that's completed and we can see there aren't any gaps, we will move on to putting the glazing points in which are little pieces of metal that we are going to shoot into the side of these wood pieces, so like the rail and the mutton, to hold it in place. Basically, they have a point, but they also have this lip. And what that lip will allow you to do is to even be able to press in this glazing point with a putty knife. So you can put your putty knife against and you can press it into the side. And so the type that I use most frequently are the diamond point glazing points. I'm gonna hold this against the wood flat and I'm just going to pull. And what it'll do is it's pushed that small glazing point into the side of the wood that is now holding the painted glass in place. I'm gonna repeat on this side. And we're gonna shoot it in and see if we can get those to slot correctly. So now that we have the glazing points in, what we're actually going to do is flip your window over. And what I'm gonna do is cut away this extra glazing putty on this back side. And all this putty is still good, as long as it doesn't have like a lot of debris or anything in it, it should be able to be used again. And so I just put it back into with the rest. You may have to come back in here and clean it up again a little later because as we press down, when we glaze the window, a little bit more putty can kind of squish out. That should be good in giving us a clear picture of where we need to glaze because we're gonna fill these edges with glazing and then we're gonna cut it back with either this glazing tool or 
an angled putty knife. And so again, what I end up doing is just taking kind of a chunk of this glazing putty and I'm going to put a little on my glazing knife. And I'm gonna kind of just fill in this gap. So how I shape putty is I usually go in one long line and kind of one pull. I like to hold my wrist in the same position. So first I will cut in to the corner at the angle that I want the corner at. Then I tilt it down and I'm gonna let this wood edge guide my putty knife. So I'm pressing down, I'm dragging it towards me, I'm keeping my wrist kind of locked in place and I'm gonna tilt it up and kind of come into that corner. After this, you can kind of pull the putty away from this side very gently. But once you have that part out, all you have to do is you kind of roll the extra putty you cut off out of the way. I want my glazing putty to be about the width of the rabbit. So when I look at this, it's still a little bit thick. So I'm gonna come in here, come in at this angle again. I'm gonna cut a little bit more off and kind of continue pressing in. At that point, what you end up doing is working your way around the window. So I like to shift my window because I am right hand dominant, because then I'm gonna come at this corner that I just worked on and I'm gonna cut into the corner at the angle I want that corner and pull and cut into that other one. To finish up this process, you pull and shape all four of these sides. Um, at the end, which is kind of a cleanup and setting point for the putty, what you wanna do is use your whiting powder, which is the calcium carbonate. You basically just come in and dust along this edge. And what this does, especially with linseed oil-based putties like Sarco Glaze, is create like a little bit more of a skin, which kind of protects the putty a little bit more. And that is pretty much the glazing process. You let that sit and make sure the glazing putty is hardened a little bit before you end up painting.